You know when you're like young and naive and there's things you know how to do well and think nobody else in your recess class knows how to do? Well, to me, that was spelling out the word spaghetti and encyclopedia. I thought I was the sh I would go around spelling the words and explaining the phonics behind spaghetti and encyclopedia to people age group 5 to 10 and they wouldn't know how to. Today I'm not just going to spell out the words anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, I'm also going to define them to you in a very cellular physiological level so that you may go around and explain them to people in your age group. Welcome to the missed appointment. What is inflammation? It's our body's physiological protective response to anything that can cause damage to our body. And that can range from a pathogen, say like a bacteria or a virus, could be from the environment like smoke or pollution, even heavy metals like lead and mercury. All of these can trigger an inflammatory response, which involves a lot of inflammatory cells, your white cells, your fighter cells, your cytokines and mediators that pretty much sends out signals and instructions to the rest of the body on how to deal with the crap that's causing crappy things to our body. So this physiological immunovascular response is not so bad, right? I mean, it's our body's way of taking care of crap. But sometimes when we put our body under a little too much inflammation and a little too often, then our body's defenses can go psycho. This little local spark of inflammatory response can and go nuts and set everything ablaze systematically. So many medical conditions and health issues today are related to this inflammatory inferno, I guess is what I would call it. And there are things in the pharmaceutical industry, in the naturopathic and supplement um, aisle of certain grocery stores, and even in your diet and nutrition that can help dampen this fire of inflammation that's so very taxing to our metabolic energy and can weaken our defenses. Omega-3 fatty acids is one that I'm sure you guys have heard of. They are essential for fighting inflammation in our body. There are three kinds, which are ALA, EPA, and DHA. EPA and DHA, you can go to a supplement aisle and just pick one of these bottles, or you can also go get some fish oil and krill oil. These are the most popular ones out there. You can also go to your farmer's market and grab yourself some cold water fish like salmon and tuna. They're very rich in DHA and EPA. For ALA fatty acids, you can get them from flax seeds or better yet, flax oil. Also some chia seeds, which are some of my favorite things to add from salads to smoothies and everything in between. Other anti-inflammatory sources are your green leafy veggies. They're always the answer. Curcumin from turmeric and ginger oil from ginger are rock stars at shutting off inflammatory enzymes and reducing inflammation. Now our body undergoes hundreds of biochemical reactions every day and in the process it generates certain byproducts such as free radicals. There are endogenous free radicals that result from normal cell activation, normal metabolism, sometimes even inflammation and stress. Then there are external sources of free radicals, such as radiation, drugs, smoke, and certain metals. Accumulation of these free radicals can cause what we call oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is very damaging to the integrity of our cells. It's DNA, it's proteins, essentially making or stopping whatever that cell is designed to do and instead do something else. So our body generates what we call antioxidants, the unsung hero of protection. They keep us healthy from all the free radical damage. Glutathione is the mother of all antioxidants. Our body makes it, GNC sells it. You can maximize glutathione production by providing our body the precursors for it, which are the amino acids cysteine, glycine, and glutamine. You can also find these at the GNC stores, or you can obtain them from consumption of foods that are rich in these amino acids, which are your whey protein, raw eggs, and red meat. Other antioxidants include vitamins C, E, ALA, and the mineral selenium. These also help um, 
recycle glutathione and thereby increasing its antioxidant properties. Eating vegetables that are rich in sulfur is a great way to boost the activity of glutathione because glutathione is pretty much useless without sulfur. And sources of this would be garlic, onions, and leeks, which are great additives to your fried rice. So those are the two big anti-stuff that you keep hearing from your wellness warriors and health promoter peeps. Now you know what they mean, and in addition, you know how to spell them. From turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric and turmeric. 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 I can't say the turmeric. Why can't I just say it like that? Turmeric. Turmeric. I just want to put a whole montage of like you only saying turmeric. Please don't. That was it. Did I say it wrong? That's fine.